hello happy saturday thank you for coming by the channel i really appreciate it my name is susan and i'm just gonna do a, a weekly wrap up so today is august 8th um and so the first week of august reading is in the books first let me tell you about two books that i have started in the month of august but i haven't um i haven't finished i have begin again uh, James Baldwin's America and its urgent, urgent lessons for our, our own. I am really enjoying this book. I don't know a ton about James Baldwin and this is, I think, an excellent way to start getting acquainted with him. Um, Eddie Cloud Jr., he is, um, he's weaving quite a tale here. We, we talk about the past, the civil rights movement. We talk about James Baldwin. We talk about the present under the current um, presidential administration, and it's all weaved together in a very cohesive way. I really like how he writes. It's not something you race through. Um, his writing is, I'm gonna say dense, but like in, in the good way, not, not in a bad way, like in a good way, and you need to be paying attention. Yet, the way he writes it, it's it works. It's really wonderful writing, and you're learning so much. I mean, so much. So again, I'm only at page 71, but I am really enjoying this, and I'm sure I'll finish this this month. I also started Wolf Hall, which I know the rest of the reading world has already read and most have loved. Um, this was a Booker Prize winner. It's a trilogy and her the, the third book in this trilogy is up for the Booker again this year, Hilary Mantel. I'm at part two, chapter one, Visitation, 1529. So this, this story, this is the Thomas Cromwell story, Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, et cetera, et cetera. I really don't care about this story. I just don't. I mean, I know the general flow of where this is going. That said, I'm loving it. Every t I've only delved into it, I think, three different days. And um, Hilary Mantel is making this whole uh, time period and crazy situation quite delightful and wonderful. Like. This, this is master storytelling right here. I Do I feel compelled to get back to it? No, to be frank. But then as soon as I start reading it again, I'm like, this is amazing. Her writing is amazing. And she's making a story that I already know the general contours to. So enjoyable, so good. So a thousand Elvis fans were not wrong about this one. So, that, so these two are my in progress and I'll be doing wrap ups of these two later in the month. Oh, the first book I completed this month, total flop, total flop. It's my first Fanny Flag book. And from what I read about Fanny Flag, first of all, does everyone in the world know this and I was the only one who didn't? Do you all know who Fanny Flag is? Did you used to watch, what was that game show? Match Game. Did you used to watch that? She's the redhead from the Match Game. That's Fanny Flag. I just, I didn't put two and two together that the Fanny from Match Game is the Fanny Flag who wrote Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, which I have not read. I've only seen the movie and it's been ages since I've seen the movie, but I love the movie. So I went to Barnes and Noble last month to get the book and they didn't have it, but they had this one. And someone had reviewed this on the back. The, um, the Richmond Times Dispatch said, undoubtedly Flag's wisest book, comic and compassionate, born of a tender heart and nurtured by an imaginative mind. It's, a, it's certain to touch the reader's soul. I could not disagree with that more. This was stupid. If I hadn't, I shouldn't say that. That's rude. Anyone who gets a book published, that's an accomplishment. This book was not for me. <laughs> I just did not, uh, it felt extremely superficial and not worth my time reading. <laughs> the final night that I was reading this, I told my husband, I am not going to sleep 
till I finish this book. And it's not because I am loving this book. It's because I do not want to spend another day with this book on my to-do. And if I hadn't bought it, if I had just gotten it from the library, I would have returned, I, I just would have returned it. But I bought it and I do like the cover. <laughs> so now, I, 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 from the library, I did sign up, you know, on the wait list for fried green tomatoes and it's in. And now I'm like, do I even want to read fried green tomatoes? Like this was so off-putting to me. I don't know. Let me, let me know in the comments. Is, uh, is Fried Green Tomatoes worth reading? I loved the movie. This, I did not love. I did not find the story to have any depth to it. I did not find the writing to be um, anything along the lines of what I enjoy. I gave this one star. One. Okay. Uh, that's enough. I hate being negative like that, but geez, just not for me. Then the next book, I just finished this last night. It's The Return. I don't know if you can see it's reflecting um, with the sun by Rachel Harrison. So this was a genre, this book came out earlier in 2020 and the genre was horror. And I don't read horror books normally, but I did dabble in um, Stephen King's If It Bleeds. And I'm like, I can handle this. So I got the return because um, someone on Instagram that I follow just raved about it. And I'm not sure how I'm going to rate it yet. Again, this is not my normal genre. So it has elements of the um, supernatural and, you know, um, that I just... I guess I enjoy supernatural like in the mythology way. <laughs> But supernatural in this way is not really my thing, but I I enjoyed the book. I mean, I read it in one day. It was a one day read. Um, it Okay, so it's horror, but I wasn't horrified. Nothing scared me. Like I wasn't grossed out. And um, I thought her writing was really good. My problem with it is, something I can't tell you. <laughs> the whole like crux of what the horror is. Yeah, so I'm not sure how I wanna rate it. I think I'm at least rating it a three. I did check Goodreads after I finished it last night and it has mixed reviews um, from people who read a lot more horror <laughs> than obviously I do. And um, so, but if you're, if maybe I should put it this way. If you're like me who likes literary fiction, classics, um, the occasional mystery thriller. Like this was worth my time yesterday. Like I really enjoyed it. We were running errands and a couple of them. So my husband and I were out running errands and like I sat in the car and read on one of the errands I didn't need to like, participate in because I just, I wanted to keep reading. So anyway, that's the return. And then I got um, my book of the month box yesterday. I don't remember what I ordered. <laughs> we, we'll see what's in this box. Um, I do like that with book of the month, I think it's $15 a month and you're getting a new release and then you can buy additional books, hardback books for $10, nine ninety nine, and And that appeals to me. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. The Night Swim, I am really getting into this whole mystery thriller kind of genre. A true crime podcast host covering a controversial trial finds herself drawn deep into a town, small town's dark past and a brutal crime that took place there years before. I will let you know how that one goes. And then I got um, Jojo Moise, The Giver of Stars. So I know, again, everyone and their brother has read this book. Um, and honestly, it, it, the description does not appeal to me. This is historical fiction, but I hate not knowing what everyone else has been talking about. So you hear a lot about <clears throat> this book and the, the book woman of troublesome Creek. I'll, I'll put that there. So I was going to read this first and then that one. Um, and because I could get this for $10, 
from the subscription, I went ahead and, and, and got it. Um, you probably all have read this, but I'll read a little description <laughs> from the front flap. Set in Depression Era America, a breathtaking story of five extraordinary women and their remarkable journey through the mountains of Kentucky and beyond. I am from Kentucky, so I'm going to read that. So I'm very excited. I'm sorry I was so negative about this. Um, let me know if you are a fan of Fanny Flagg. Let me know if you liked this book and I'm just like totally off kilter or if this is just not very representative of her normal writing and storytelling. I would like to know that. Or if you've read Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe and loved it. And then of course, these two. Oh, and I was watching, um, I think his name is Brian from um, the YouTube channel Bookish. Uh, um, maybe you guys have already subscribed to him. Again, I don't know how well that's showing up on my on my screen. But um, Brian with Bookish, he is doing um, Faulkner in August, and he's he's uh, doing The Sound and the Fury. I remember reading The Sound and the Fury. It was a nightmare. Like I, I just didn't know. Like I had so much trouble understanding what was going on um, as a kid. Then, so he after watching his part one video yesterday. I'm kind of, I think I'm going to go get a copy of The Sound and the Fury and give it another go because I bet it's going to make more sense to me. It's um, part of the book is Stream of Conscience and I, I, I probably just didn't have the patience back then to like, you know, wade through figuring things out. <laughs> but um, so I think after watching uh, Bookish's video yesterday, I'm going to get that and read that this month too. And who knows what else? I hope you guys are having a great reading start to August. Let me know in the comments below what you're reading. Let me know if you've read any of these books. And if you haven't done so, I would love, I would love if you would subscribe, leave me a comment, like the video, all that good stuff. I thank you so much for watching. Take care.